Welcome! I'm Benedek Rosenbergsky and today I'm going to talk about Pathfinder Discovery Networks for Neural Message Passing, which is a joint work with Peter Englert, Amol Kapoor, Martin Blaze and Brian Perozzi. So, a little bit of overview. First I will start with an introduction, then I will discuss the Pathfinder Discovery Network model, then we will go over some experiments that we performed in the paper. Then I will have a short summary of our key findings. Okay, so what is the machine learning problem that we are trying to solve? Let us imagine that we have a multiplex graph with multiple types of edges and we have node labels that we are trying to predict. In an optimal setting, we would be able to get a graph which only has intraclass edges, in this case edges between blue nodes in one component, and in another component we would have edges between red nodes which are from the other class, and this graph would be optimal with respect to this downstream task of, of predicting the node labels. One way would be to learn first a method which can aggregate these edges into a single type of edge and then what we could do is to train a classifier, for example an embedding and then a logistic regression to predict the node labels, which is kind of suboptimal and it would be nice to learn the edge aggregation and the node classification jointly. So that is the primary goal of what we are going to do. Okay, so in a from a general point of view, what we are going to do is we will define a neural network layer, a parametric machine learning model, which will be able to aggregate the edges in a multiplex graph. Then we will look at certain theoretical properties of this layer, which are kind of interesting. Then we will show how existing layers, such as diffusion convolutions, and edge convolutions can be seen as special cases of this layer that we will propose. Then we will evaluate these models by some node classification tasks. The basic building block of our model is the Pathfinder neuron. A Pathfinder neuron takes the normalized edges and symmetries of a, a multiplex graph, the different layers are represented as edges and symmetries, weights them by learnable parameters, these are the betas, then applies a nonlinear transformation and outputs a learned graph, uh, the edges and symmetries of a learned graph, which we denoted by capital G tilde. So this is the Pathfinder neuron, this is the basic, most basic contribution of our paper, and we are going to reuse this as a basic building block for other neural network layers. So let us go on. Uh, so if you have multiple Pathfinder neurons, they can form a so-called Pathfinder layer, which is the hidden layer in this case. Each of the neurons receives the, the multiplex uh, graphs, edges and symmetries as input and combines those into a single learned graph. Then a final Pathfinder neuron combines all of these learned graphs together and outputs a learned graph G hat. So let us keep in mind our original go goal, which was the classification of nodes. So what we could do is that we could channel this learned graph into a graph neural network, which can take uh, node features as an input and also this learned graph and output a hidden representation for all of the nodes, which we denoted in this case by uh, capital Z, which is a matrix, which contains node features, which are learned from uh, the original node features and learned from the multiplex graph, which we use for message passing. This neural network layer that we have here is based on the Kipfund Valley and Graph Convolutional Neural Network, but keep in mind that you can change this to any type of message passing uh, graph neural network that you want to use. The point is that we use the Pathfinder layer to learn the message passing graph, which is optimal with respect to a downstream task. Interestingly, this model is very, very expressive. For example, let us imagine a scenario where we have two layers in the multiplex graph and intra-class edges are expressed by those uh, either one of those edges uh, uh, existing. Uh, so your problem is learning an Excel problem on the edges and you are trying to predict whether something is in, uh, an intra-class edge. And interestingly, with the right setup and right definition of the uh, of the neurons, you can have a setup where you are able to learn and express this fact that intra-class edges are 
uh, expressed by the Excel problem, which is interesting. Another interesting property of the model that we propose is that it doesn't suffer from the diminishing edge weights issue. So, for example, in a graph attention network, when you have a large number of neighbors and the number of neighbors tends to infinity, the individual edge weights are going to go to zero, which is an issue, and it characterizes a large number of graph convolutional neural networks. On the contrary, the, the edge weights of a properly defined PDN Pathfinder discovery network will never diminish and they can be even constant if you have the appropriate parameterization of your Pathfinder discovery network, which is a nice property to have. Another interesting aspect of Pathfinder discovery networks is that you can formulate very complex graph neural networks as corner cases of our general model. So for example, if the, the input graphs are parameterized by, uh, you know, uh, inner products of uh, node representations uh, that you learn from fe features on each of the layers, then you can formulate edge convolutions as uh, Corner, uh, as a corner case of Pathfinder discovery networks and what you are learning is that you have multiple attention heads over those features, you do the edge convolutions and then you can learn to aggregate this into a, uh, into a single message passing uh, graph, which is interesting. Another aspect is that, for example, if you would learn a distribution over the edges and symmetric powers, then what would happen is that you could formulate diffusion convolutions as Pathfinder discovery networks. So, for example, in this case, what we do is that each of the edges and symmetric powers is weighted by a probability score PI, and you have a way of combining these edges and symmetric powers, which you use as input matrices uh, for your Pathfinder neuron. So these are all very interesting properties, of course, but let us look at some experiments which will show you how you can use the Pathfinder discovery networks for neural message passing. Okay. So first experiment is node classification on a multiplex graph. So these are uh, web graph data sets uh, in which you are trying to predict uh, the label of nodes. And what we do is that we compare PDNs, which are in green, to other methods which operate on multiplex graphs. Specifically, we look at certain type of uh, supervised models, such as MGZN and BMGI, but also unsupervised ones, which we combine with the logistic regression. And what you can see is that PDNs have a very nice high test accuracy score, uh, of course, some supervised models are comparable, but we are able to beat the unsupervised ones, and most of the differences that you can see are significant, which is important. So, PDNs have high accuracy scores. So what else we can know about PDNs? Another thing is that you can look at um, synthetic data. In this case, we performed a synthetic node classification experiment where we generate data synthetically. The details of the, the generative model for, for the graphs is described in the, in the paper. Uh, I will walk you through over all of the scenarios and what, you, what we can learn from these scenarios. So first scenario is if you increase the number of classes that you have for your node classification tasks, most of the uh, graph convolutional models that we use for comparison and graph neural networks have a drop in performance, but PDNs only uh, suffer a tiny bit from a larger number of classes uh, when you do the node classification tasks. Of course, when you increase the number of uh, nodes that you can learn from, which is the second scenario, all of the models gain, but it seems that PDNs have an excellent ability to generalize from uh, uh, newer and newer nodes. In the third scenario, we investigated what happens if the number of intra-class uh, edges increases, and as you can see, that is if as the linking probability increases, the performance of PDN increases, and of course it is true for other models. In scenario 4, what you see is that if the number of interclass edges increases, most of the models initially uh, observe a drop in performance, but not PDNs, and later on models learn to invert edges and learn that they shouldn't use information coming from the neighborhood. Uh, of course, PDN is resistant to this type of issue. In scenario 5, what you can see is that increase Increasing the number of node features helps most models, but PDNs generalize extremely well even with a low number of node features. And in scenario 6, we learned that the increase in the number of edge features results in a drop in performance for PDN, which is um, most probably because of overfitting to the data. 
Finally, what we see is that most models uh, suffer when the variance of node features increases. Uh, and we also learned that increasing the variance of edge features uh, has no effect on the performance of other models, which was expected. So what else can we say? Runtime. This is very interesting. So we investigated the relative runtime of models uh, that we proposed compared to a simple spectral GCN and we looked at uh, cases when the edge aggregation function is simple, such as a general linear model, or for example when it's a shallow neural network or a deeper neural network and we looked at the uh, relative runtime increase and what we see is that of course uh, you know runtime increases but the relative runtime increase is constant when you don't change the you know increase the number of edge features first of all and also that more complex uh, edge aggregation models are slower which is interesting but the point is that you have a runtime increase but it's you know it's reasonable the interesting thing is that PDNs uh, can be thought of as an attention mechanism over the input graphs. So for example, when you have a diffusion convolutional model, you can think of the weights of the PDN as attention over the different powers of the adjacency matrix. And we investigated how attention changes through uh, the training. And what you can see here is that as the training progresses, uh, you know, attention is uh, on the first and second order proximity and when the models start to overfit what you observe is that the attention on the second order proximity starts to drop which is a very interesting empirical phenomenon what else so in another experiment what we looked at is how uh, different types of edge similarity scores in graphs uh, uh, are used uh, as weights, as edge weights, and we, we plotted the attention that is learned. And what you can see is that most of the attention is on uh, measures of um, tie strengths, which are normalized, for example, max overlap. And there is very little attention on scores which are unnormalized, such as the degree product. So let us summarize. So we defined the Pathfinder neuron which is a basic building block for the Pathfinder layer. And the Pathfinder layer and the graph neural network can be used as a Pathfinder discovery network. We discussed certain theoretical properties of this model. Then we evaluated this model by a node classification on multiplex graphs. We looked at some runtime experiments and we investigated how the model weights can be interpreted as attention. So, the source code of PDN is publicly available with the datasets. If you look at github.com slash Benedek Rosenbertsky slash PDN. Thank you for the kind attention and have a nice day.